All right. Good evening and welcome to another session of the Nashville Grotto Survey Talk. My name is Josh Brewer and uh, tonight is our fifth night of getting together and talking about survey, which everyone loves to do. Let me... Dun, 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 dun. That is not the right spot. All right, can everybody see me now? Yep, cool. All right, so once again, welcome. We have made it to the fifth part of this series. Um, I probably would be remiss if I didn't say may the fourth be with you. I'm sure we have some Star Wars fans. Uh, if you are watching this taped, we have a lot of people doing that recorded on our YouTube channel. Uh, hello to you guys. Uh, and that's the way I, I watch a lot of things on YouTube that you can learn off of. So the Nashville Grotto has our own uh, page, so check us out. Uh, and tonight we're going to get into survey uh, sketching of profiles and uh, the tools that we need to do that within the cave. And so our regular survey tools, we've been seeing these the last couple of talks, our Disto and Sunto and Steel Grab and fiber, Fiberglass Tape. It's a good thing to have. Um, and so for, for actually sketching, uh, drawing in the cave, uh, Ben Miller went over a few of these things, but you want a good pencil. Um, most people prefer a five mil these days. Uh, seven is a little thick, but you can use that. I know some people use a three mil. Uh, those things are uh, way too fragile for me. I'm, I guess I'm hard on it and I break them uh, very easily. So get you a good pencil. You can use uh, the ruler with a protractor there or the cave compass, which is awfully popular um, to help you do this. Uh, a clipboard. I like the foldable kind. Um, some people use uh, other kinds, but yeah, good clipboard. And then, of course, standard survey paper to collect your data and to draw on. And so tonight, you know, like what is a cave profile? And, you know, in the simplest terms, it's just a drawing of the continuous floor and ceiling of the cave uh, or, you know, the vertical extent. And so when you're, when you're talking about a cave profile, um, that's all you're concentrating on. And so, um, in my opinion, the bow, uh, the profile is uh, most often uh, the best snapshot of a cave that you can get as far as like on a map. And so you can very easily look at this profile here and get kind of an idea of what the entire cave uh, is. Um, and this profile here, the whole, the whole cave, you got a little crawling, you got a little walking, you got a little short pit, you know, it's super easy to identify just in general, you don't, you don't even have to be a caver to figure that stuff out just by looking at it. Um, I put this one in just because I worked so hard on the stairway uh, and I've never shown this to anybody. And so I thought, well, if you're going to do a profile talk, throw this one there. So yeah, you can show stairways on them too. So um, man-made features are a lot harder to make look right in your cave maps uh, because they have too many straight angles and perfectness. Um, on this profile, you could tell, hey man, this is just a short cave, you know? Like a lot of information uh, can easily uh, be popped out. Look here, here's a through trip. We've got two clearly identified entrances. Uh, and so that's just, you know, it doesn't take any background in caving or geology. Uh, maybe this one, okay, formation field passage. If you don't know the symbols, might not know exactly what's going on, but still, um, you know, if you're, if you're familiar, you know what you're getting into. Water passage, you know, if you're going to a cave and all you're doing is checking out the map, um, 
if you if you see people swimming or if there's not people swimming you see water depths you know that's important um and one thing that i've often thought about is you know often uh water depth and caves vary a lot and so i try to make a note of like is this during wh what would you consider this this flow that we have in the cave is this normal is this like a high flow is this a low flow you know i think those should be noted uh if if you uh if you can figure that kind of stuff out uh very simply you can see if it's way too tight you know if it's super small if you're looking for a nice easy cave and you see a profile like this uh, and you're trying to take your wife and kids with you or something this might not be the one to bring them to um and then you know you can see easily like you know natural bridges other other formations that might uh, be hard to depict in plan view uh, show up rather easy in profile view. Um, this cave here, you can say, oh man, it's just a big slope all the way down. Don't know if we'll need a rope, but you know that it's a, uh, you, you can tell the general trend and everything about the cave. And yeah, I wonder what those question marks do. What, what is that? So, um, and then vertical passage. Um, this is Moses's tomb. Uh, that I mapped uh, in 2020 with John Zetterberg and Ben Miller. And uh, if you look at this profile, you, you probably know rather quickly if you deserve to be anywhere near this cave. If you're, if you're not a vertical caver, uh, you know, you, you can definitely pick that out quick. Um, and other profiles, uh, this one on the right uh, from Sunroom Cave uh, in Wyoming. And uh, I thought this was a cool cave. And I, I might even actually go back and touch this one up a little bit because it's really not clear. But uh, you, come off, uh, you come off a big bluff in the cave, you know, like 80 or 90 feet above. And uh, the buff line just keeps going and the floor is way down here. Um, and so that's something you can easily tell, like what kind of entrance, you know, with that cave there, you had to kind of go down and then swing in. Uh, this cave over here. Uh, you know, you can say that, the, oh, there's multiple kind of things maybe to look at. Uh, it's going to be a little wet. Who knows? Uh, it doesn't look like you need a wetsuit, but uh, you could get rained on. So, And then you can display cave geology. So this is a, uh, a symbol of, um, and you have SiO2 uh, leaking into your limestone. You got a bunch of silica quartz, quart nodules, uh, this, this symbol sometimes used. Uh, I mapped a cave in North Dakota that had a huge uh, coal seam in it. And so uh, I was able to, to put that in there, um, which, which gives a little link. Now this, this is one of my favorite profiles that I've ever drawn. Um, and this is where, this is also in North Dakota. I took um, five small caves and I did a surface survey to connect them all. And, um, and so one thing that would have maybe made this better as far as like a, a overhead view of a line plot that showed me on the topography because this wasn't a straight line. Uh, and so I, I never did really address that. But, um, you know, I came out of these little caves and just, you know, land surveyed over. Uh, to another sinkhole, which had two caves in it, uh, land surveyed over to a big through trip uh, that I found big. That's a, the second longest cave in North Dakota. That's 98 feet. Uh, so hu huge, huge cave passages. But, um, you know, the profile, you know, connects all those and uh, you can kind of get a sense for uh, the Badland topography. Uh, if you if you've got the time to add in vegetation and uh, other things that you know it's all about what you want in your profile so um, and then this this uh, this is a profile I drafted for a project uh, from Jim Kennedy who presented uh, last month for us I believe um, and the one thing I always I always wanted you know it's it's kind of unclear. Um, how you how you traverse this, um, and I thought it was a good. It's more of a artistic rendering of a of a profile than I would than than I would try to draw myself. Not my style, but 
um, after talking to Jim, like you, you, you hand climb up through here and into this stuff, but it's still not, you know, it's, it's not perfect. And so you want to, in my opinion, you know, a good profile uh, not only shows you features of the cave, but, you know, you can figure out uh, what's the best way to go um, through the cave. Um, and then, uh, so don't worry if you're new to profiles and you're like, oh man, I'm not very good at this, you'll get better. I found this, Jim, uh, <laughs> looking through stuff for this series of talks. This is the first profile I ever drew, drafted, of a cave pit in the Mammoth Cave National Park. And I never noticed that I had this limestone layer just hanging out here above, <laughs> you know, the pit. And it, there's no like arch or anything like that definitely should be cut <laughs> off there just showing sky. But, you know, I, I, I kind of cracked up at myself that uh, looking back through some really old maps, uh, I could probably go through and touch up a lot of things uh, and make them a little bit better. Uh, I'm getting close to, I started mapping in 2008. So uh, you, get, you get better over time. And it's just like anything else, the more you spend with it. Um, so those are like, you know, kind of common profiles and, you know, what, what uh, different things look like, but, um, you know, we need some data for that stuff. And so um, going back through, these are kind of familiar slides, but just to uh, reiterate, you know, what you're looking at. So you, we measure the distance between the stations. Uh, we move over to the front site, um, shoot a back site. You know, we always want to be, I guess with distos now, it's half a degree or a degree, but, you know, your cartographer will set you up with some kind of standard to try to shoot and meet. Uh, with the soon toes, we always did two degrees. Uh, and I know some, some people did one anyway. They took a little bit more time. Uh, and then you have your left, right, up, down measurements, which you always want to kind of stay in that order uh, just because your sketchers are usually – uh, thinking about things and if you yell out numbers and in that order all the time it's easier to kind of pause what we're doing and uh, jot those down um, and so I didn't have a, it was uh, I didn't have enough time to really do a bunch of this that I wanted to and so we might touch on it more next next time too but I drew in these first three shots from A15A to B1, to B2, to B3. So 24 foot shot, a 19 foot shot, and a six foot shot. And so, you know, when you're in the cave, um, I guess I, I'm getting ahead of myself. So uh, the data needed uh, for a profile shot, obviously you need your distance. Uh, when you're drawing the profile, the, the azimuth or the bearing, uh, that doesn't really matter uh, when drawing the profile. So you can, you can ignore those numbers. And so you'll want your distance and then your vertical angle. Uh, and so drawing from A15 to B1 to B2, you would use 24.4 at a two degree. You use that front sight, positive two. 19.9 and then it went to a negative four and then the six foot shot and it was actually a plus 8.7 and so uh, you know if for some reason this data was collected and you were at the b3 station and you were going to draw your way out um, then you would want to reverse all that and so you know, you'd want to have this six foot station, but if you were going to go from three to two, then that's a negative 8.6. And two to one, you know, that's a that's a positive four within. And B1 to 15A would switch over to a negative two. So you just be mindful of which way you're drawing. Um, but most of the time, if you're surveying and you're drawing as you go, then you'll just be popping off with, uh, the front site data. Uh, methodology, I just want to take a moment. I don't have any slides for this, 
but really and truly, there's kind of two ways that most people think about uh, drawing a profile uh, within the cave. And so uh, one, one method, and I guess uh, in the people that I hang out with, this is more common, uh, where you draw the 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 extents of the cave and so you draw the highest ceiling and the lowest floor and so um, the other way would be you follow the survey line to a t um, and this is where i really i really wish i had a little bit more time to kind of show some photos but if you if you can imagine you have a meandering stream um, and you shoot a survey shot that goes over across some of the meanders. Well, when you're drawing the full extent of the cave, then your stream floor is probably your lowest level. And so you're always going to have the stream displayed and then whatever the highest points in your ceiling are. Uh, and so those things could be offset of the survey line. Um, and then the other way would be following just straight down your survey line, whatever the survey line goes over, you draw. And so in the meandering stream example, uh, you're drawing the stream and then it turns and cuts away and you hit a mud bank. So then for a section of of the profile, you draw a mud floor, and then the stream comes back in and meanders and comes back into this uh, shot. So you'll have a little section of stream again, um, and, that, and that can repeat uh, as you go. And so most people draw the, the uppermost and lowermost so that you can make um, the profile kind of show the, the furthest extents uh, of the passage. But, there, there, are, there are other methodologies to do that too. Um, and when you're, when you're sketching in cave, you can only really do an extended profile. Uh, once you get to the drafting stage of it, there are other types of profiles that you can create, but that's more through a data processing and not just the true sketching of that. And so, Tonight, we're just going to be kind of talking, doing an intro to drawing the extended profile. Uh, and maybe later on, we can address like how to take that data uh, to make other types of profiles. All right. So, drawing the line plot. Okay. Hopefully, there's some. All right. So, those three shots that we, that, uh, we showed out. Um, this is the first one. Um, from B1 or from A15A to B1. And so this is the cave compass. And uh, I've tried to zoom in this uh, shot on the right. Um, and so this is not going to be great. But if, if you have one of these, it's really easy to, you know, you should play around with it. Um, there's a bunch of numbers and a lot of good scales on here. But for your profiles, you have a horizontal line that shoots out from the center. Um, and so the 90 degree mark uh, on the dial uh, is off to the right. And so that is your zero zero for uh, determining angles uh, for your uh, vertical. And so if the, uh, you just gotta always think it's in reverse. So if your number is a positive 10 degrees, then you want to take the dial and, and turn it down 10 degrees um, and then straighten it up on the paper. So uh, that's the first shot. The second shot, uh, and these are awful, but here's what you come out with. So we got three, three stations, two shots of data. We use the, the left, right, up, down. And so I'd use just your up and just your down. And we used your distance and your front incline to get these two shots. And so here, up four, you know, down four. Here we had up one, up five, 
down four uh, and up here, up four, uh, looks like down seven. Um, and this is, you know, I, I, I uh, was rushing. I should have a scale bar on here. I should have my name, all that good stuff. Uh, for profiles, you don't really need a north arrow per se. Uh, but um, yeah, in a rush, I don't have it labeled at all. But this is at 20 to one. So the big box here is 20 feet. Every little box here then is two feet. And then so, you know, finally getting to sketching in the profile. And I'm glad that, you know, there's all the, the rumors and everything of they're about to start lifting the bands and stuff. And so I think we're, we'll be able to set up for our first little workshop, which all this stuff is a lot easier to go through. But so our first shot here, our second shot. And so when you're, you know, when you're in the cave, and you're sitting at this shot. For me, uh, profile has always been easiest to start <laughs> drawing at the station and walking towards the next station. Um, and I would suggest, I know this is a day of lasers and uh, everybody's wanting to you know, get footage and be fast, but when you're first out learning, it, it would be good to you know, take a day or two to where that's not the case and you know, lay out a tape. Um, and really laying out a tape for me, I did that for probably two years uh, drawing profiles and it really helped to kind of stay on line, walking down, you, you know, just look at your feet, figure out where you were, take a measurement of the ceiling uh, at any given point along that, or at least base other measurements off that. And so, um, Tapes are, tapes are very handy <laughs> for like, like we learned uh, last time with pit survey, uh, but also just for drawing, you know, really good profiles. Um, and you can, you know, just like with our other types of surveys or when we're drawing, now we've got a disto, we can shoot a bunch of shots from one point if we want. And so um, once we get into talking about sketching plan view, um, you know, I basically shoot an array of splays that I don't even really write down anymore that's in the real data, uh, but helps me uh, put, uh, draw in features of the cave. And so you could do that here too. You could sit here and you could shoot the azimuth and bearing to that uh, ceiling feature and then shoot it over here to this one. And you've got that nailed down and, um, you know, it's all about how much time you want to take and how good you want your map to be. You know, we've got the tools to make them really good. Now, if you're just wanting a travel map, uh, you don't need to do all that. You know, you can kind of just, uh, yeah, if, if, if you're just worrying about kind of exploration and um, kind of knowing where it goes and uh, the basic dimensions, uh, you could take your survey data and input it into a cave wear <laughs> and pop you out a, a working a working map as you went so that is uh that is the brief intro into profiles and so i'm hoping if there's still anybody here uh maybe we have some questions um oh there are actually a few more people showed up there's my girlfriend she knows how to do a profile Yep, but anyway, that was the quick and dirty uh, for sure. Um, next time I'm hoping to be a little bit more prepared and hopefully TDOT will be done, but we'll be talking about getting into uh, sketching the plan view. And then we can really talk about our first, uh, you know, little workshop. And I think Carolyn and I might have a, a perfect little cave that we could uh, do some stuff in that's kind of close. Uh, and so we hope that that gets to popping. Um, does anybody have any questions at the moment? Jim, I think you can go ahead and probably shut this one down for tonight, the recording. And uh, thank you all. Let me see here. What's our next date? That is... <laughs> 